Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we are going to go over a 2021 Vintage Cruiser 19ERD. This is a lightweight retro style model. This one is the Woody Edition they call it. You will see the retro looks kind of have the red and white all throughout. This particular layout of course is a rear dinette as you see. Uh, I actually do like that aspect of it, having a rear dinette because you have windows all the way around, lets in a lot of natural light. Feels nice and open and airy during the day despite being a smaller footprint and not having any slides. As far as size in the dinette, I will sneak on in here and you can see I do have enough room for another person. For the table itself, it is a little bit low for me. Uh, while I have plenty of room here and you know the table of course is fully movable, uh, from the, the top of my legs to the bottom of the table, there just isn't a ton of space. And again, you know, I, I kind of have to almost lean down a little bit on the table. So I don't know, I'm probably a quarter of an inch, a half an inch is all it would have needed to go up uh, to be a little bit more comfortable. But it's definitely manageable, it's not bad unless you know you work out, you do squats like a monster and you have huge legs, then it may be a little tight. Otherwise, you should be fine. Uh, this table does drop down into make a bed. So if you need additional sleeping space, uh, you can do that. Not a huge bed, not a tiny dinette either. Um, you know, it's six foot, you probably have to curl up a little bit, but not awful. As I mentioned, windows all the way around. You have a light right up top here, some additional storage, plus the wall scones, scones, scones? Sco a scone is a food. Scones, there we go. Wall scones on uh, both sides. Like I said, multimedia center right there in the center. That unit is Bluetooth capable. And you have speakers underneath. So if you want to jam out to some music, this is a good spot to sit. Straight across from me, of course, the doorway right here, but also your TV. So you'll see your swing arm mount located there. This mount does come off. That'll be important when we go outside because you can actually take this off, move it out there. Connections for it are underneath. Your control panel is located there. Uh, this one is pre-wired for Wi-Fi and internet. Just call 1-800. Uh, anyway, so there's the number. Um, again, anything with that, if you see it in any RVs where they have like prepped for Wi-Fi, it still does have to have a cellular plan. So just bear that in mind. It isn't free. You will have to have something to get that, uh, that cellular Wi-Fi signal. If you take a look at the kitchen itself, Again, good lighting. They, they actually, it's something they did very well. In a retro trailer, uh, a lot of them, you know, they, they lack lighting. They're kind of an old build. It's not the case with the Vintage Cruiser series. They have a lot of modern amenities. They do a great job with the lighting. Good storage right up top there, you know, so you have spot for some of your uh, plates, bowls, cups, things like that. Microwave, stainless steel hood underneath with the light and fan directly underneath that. I do like the backsplash, you know, I think it fits very well in here. Um, you have the graystone recessed cooktop, three burner cooktop with the glass cover. This one just folds up and back like so, kind of acts as a backsplash. Front burner is high output. Uh, the knobs light up blue. You know, this was a huge thing a couple years ago. I'm not a big fan. Uh, they also did this, which, you know, I, I really don't like in a retro camper. I wish they would have just not have done that or made a white light rather than the blue. Um, but you know, maybe that's again, just my personal preference. If you guys like the blue lights, you like the blue lights, this one does have it. Open up the oven. You can see it's actually a pretty uh, decent sized oven as far as width. Um, you know, you don't have, you don't have a lot of space here though. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you can't fit anything very tall in there, but you know, if you have like a sheet pan of cookies or something like that, it would probably work just fine. Underneath the sink, Three drawers, top one there kind of small because uh, you have plumbing that impedes, but the bottom two are larger, so you do still have a spot for flatware, towels, everything else you need. The sink itself is a very modern cut. Uh, it is just a single bowl. You'll see that, um, you know, again, while it isn't a very, uh, I guess it wouldn't be deep, what would that be, width, length? Anyway, from here to here isn't a ton of space, but it is a deep bowl here, which is good. So if you do have some, you know, uh, bigger pots, pans, cups, things like that, you can actually set them down in the sink high-rise faucet there as well. The sink top cover can be used as prep space and it is a cutting board. Making our way a little bit further up here, you will see the fridge freezer combo. Uh, this one does run off both propane and electric. Again, they have the red panels on the front. I think that was a, a better choice than having like the stainless or the black. Uh, I do like the red panels in this particular camper. Then we get into the bathroom. So um, this is kind of a, a different setup for me personally. I, I like the idea of it, what they tried to do. It's one of those things where it's a great idea, but bad execution in my personal opinion. So what they did is they have a walkthrough bathroom and kind of like you see in some motorhomes, they tried to make it so this can be one big bath. So you swing this door open like so, it has a lock, it locks out. 
Um, and then the part I don't like about it though is this right here is the curtain. So this kind of closes off to complete th that effect. Um, not a huge deal, right? I mean, it's also a privacy curtain because there is a door on the bathroom if someone needs to use the toilet. Uh, but, it, you know, I guess I just would have, would have rather just had like a, some kind of slider door or something here. Um, you know, not a huge deal, but again, it's just kind of a, a small miss for me. Over to the side is the shower. And I'm six foot tall. I have space here. I like that in a, you know, somewhat smaller travel trailer. Not that this is a, a small footprint, um, but, you know, it's mid-sized travel trailer. Having some head space there is a good thing. So you can probably be 6'1 and, you know, just be touching the ceiling and not have to bend down, which is pretty cool. I'll open this door up so you can take a look in here, kind of show you what you're looking at. And this is, uh, this is kind of what I was talking about, right? So you do that right there and it kind of blocks that off. Um, you know, so it, 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 again, it's, it's a decent idea. Coming into this space though, so this is where, uh, you know, you'll, you'll do your business here. Uh, with the door shut, I have pretty good space, you know, for my shoulders. You can kind of wiggle around, have a party. Um, for my feet, more than enough room there, no issues. So yeah, I think they actually did a pretty good job on the space around the toilet. You will see you have like a little shelf area here. You might be able to fit like a small trash can in there. Otherwise, good spot for, um, you know, towels. You can stack some towels there and roll them up, make them look all fancy like a hotel. You have electrical outlet, a little bit of countertop coming off the side. Mirrored medicine cabinet up top, open that up for you so you can take a look in there. And then vent fan right up top, uh, you know, in the place you want it. It won't do a ton for drying out the shower, but again, you know, it'll uh, help clear out any remnants of your, your business. Uh, as we come into the bedroom, I do like the comforter that they used here. Same thing with the pillowcases. They've changed this a couple times. A few years ago, they had like, you know, a bunch of stamps all over it, which was kind of a neat idea too. Um, but I, I like that this kind of ties in with the backsplash, you know, kind of bringing some of those elements together. On the side, you have hanging wardrobe space, not too shabby. More storage across the top, you can see that. Uh, the light's right down here, so you do have these. And, uh, you know, if you push it once, you have this, this blue light, push and hold. And then you get uh, something that's useful. So um, I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know when you'd use the blue light. Someone please tell me, maybe if you're... I don't know, trying to set the mood. Hey, honey, what do you think? Tonight, the night. <laughs> anyway, um, over on the side, we'll see a spot to hang your TV. So this is what I mentioned earlier. When you saw that swing arm, you just pop it out. You can drop it right in there, do the same thing on the outside. Connections for that are, of course, right there. And this is something you want to know where that's at. This is your thermostat for your heat. Um, you know, a lot of times it's out in the main living space. This one it is in the bedroom, so don't forget that. This is just for the heat. There's a roof mounted AC, but the controls for that are on the AC itself. Last quick thing underneath the bed, you will see right here. So you have fresh water tank. But what I wanted to show you is right there is where your spare tire is located. So uh, that is, you know, nice because it's inside, it's in good shape. And if you need to get it, now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2021 Vintage Cruiser 19 ERD or ERD. Right up front is a power tongue jack. This is a newer brand, it's Bastion Distribution. I'm seeing this on a lot of models that are coming out now. I don't know if it's better or if it's just less expensive. I will have to find out, but you will be seeing a lot of these power tongue jacks uh, on the late 2020s or into the 2021 model years. Pretty basic stuff though. You have one rocker switch to raise and lower the tongue, another rocker switch to control the light. Right behind that are two 20 pound propane tanks with a cover, rails for your battery. And underneath that, you will see the little tube and that is where you mount the, or where you <laughs> rather store your sewer hose because this one doesn't have your square tube, tubular bumper on the back. Also diamond plating coming up the front, helping to protect that front end from rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. One piece fiberglass from the front all the way up over top and down the back. That's all one single piece. Couple great things about that. The biggest thing being the fact it's less chance for water penetration. The more holes, the more seams you have up in the roof, the more areas that water can get in and it's sneaky and it will try. So because you have just one piece, you don't have the seams going across where normally the front end would meet the roof line. Same thing in the back. So again, less chance for water to get in plus You'll notice the natural, well, you can't really see it because the angle we're on, but there is a natural curvature of the roof. And so the water will tend to want to run to the front and the back of the RV. Uh, therefore, you're not getting your campsite nearly as wet. 
Right over here, you will see this one has solar prep. You want solar, buy the portable panels, plug it in right there. It's already pre-wired and it'll trickle charge your battery. The uh, front here, the pass-through you'll see has a covered hinge. So that way you don't have a bunch of rust coming down your door. If it's exposed, all the water and stuff starts to rust it out. You get all these marks. Nobody wants that. Also, it is slam latch and magnetic, so you can put it up just like so. Taking a look inside, you'll see it. it's a pretty decent storage area. It does cut back a little bit there, so you lose a little bit on the far side. A smaller door on the other side as well. But you do have good space right here on the campsite, plus a uh, LED light strip that runs the whole length in case you're getting in there at night. Power awning, touch a button to roll that guy out. Same thing to go right back in, plus the LED light strip. A couple of, that's pretty standard stuff here. A couple outside speakers. Uh, again, the great thing about this though, folks, is this is all on a vintage trailer. A lot of your retro trailers don't necessarily have that, so having these amenities is fantastic. You'll also notice this, just like we saw inside the bedroom, and as I mentioned, you can pop the TV arm and uh, pop the TV and the arm right off, pop it right in there, and now you have the same TV all throughout. Connections for that right down below. Electrical outlet, obviously, you can use for anything else. If you want to set up an electric griddle out here and uh, cook for the whole campground, you can do that too. Fancy hubcaps, you know, you can look at it, sing a song. It'll kind of be like a, a music video out of the 90s, right? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, main entrance right here. Two foldable steps, climb on in there, small little grab handle. You know, again, nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing crazy there, pretty standard stuff. Something that is pretty important though is this right here, this sticker showing that this one does have Asdell composite panels, folks. Behind this fiberglass is Asdell rather than Luon, and there are some big advantages to Asdell. One, it's lightweight. Anytime you can save weight in an RV is a great thing, especially when you're trying to make a lighter weight RV. Also, it doesn't absorb water or moisture. So, if you've ever seen like delamination or the bubbles in the side of the fiberglass looks terrible, uh, you don't have to worry about that with the Asdell because it won't absorb the moisture, so less chance for that fiberglass to come off. Uh, last thing is it is a green material, so it doesn't have the off-gassing that you often get with Luon. Coming around to the back, as I mentioned, you don't have the square tubular bumper. You do still have one, though, which is nice in case you back up into a stump. Uh, you'll see your diamond plating down there as well, mainly just for aesthetics more than anything. Right up top is your backup camera prep, so if you want a backup camera, Having the prep makes it easier to install, meaning it'll save you money on labor. And again, that's that same piece of fiberglass that we saw on the front. Coming around to the off-camp side, 30 amp detachable power cord plugs right in there. Cable inlet, satellite inlet right up here. Termination, if you drop right down there, you'll see your, uh, your gray and black tank valves. Right up above that, this is important too, black tank flush. This is something that's awesome to have on a smaller travel trailer. A lot of them don't have it. This makes it nice and easy to wash out your black tank. Just hook a hose up right there, washes everything out for you. City water inlet, spray port, so you have outside water access and fresh tank fills located right there. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2021 Vintage Cruiser 19 ERD. If you're interested in this travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what they failed, and if you were designing this RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.